Thanks for staying with us. The Lagos State Government on Tuesday called for heightened vigilance and adoption of precautionary measures to prevent potential spread of cholera in the state. This is following an increase in severe gastroenteritis cases reported in the last 48 hours. The Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor King Abayomi, revealed that this resulted in about 60 hospital admissions and sadly five deaths, primarily from patients presenting late with extreme dehydration. Uh, we have as our guest this morning, Dr. Blosom Maduafoka, a public health physician. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Um, we have this care now and the government is trying to talk to us about it and why uh, we should take proactive measures and all that. But let's first of all just uh, assume that we don't really know what uh, cholera is and what causes cholera. Let's get uh, a background information as to what cholera is and the causes. Oh, absolutely. First things first. So, so cholera is a diarrheal disease and infection that affects the gut. It put in simple terms, it's an infection that causes you to have profuse diarrhea. So profuse diarrhea will be when you're going to the toilet so many times. In fact, it's characteristic in the type of diarrhea it causes. The type of diarrhea it causes, it looks like, you know, the water you get when you wash your, when you provoke your rice and wash it, you call it rice water stools. So the individual, individual is just passing stool that looks like like water so that's in a nutshell what cholera is it's caused by a germ or bacteria that um can be transmitted through contaminated water through contaminated food or even when your hand touches things that are contaminated and you use your washed hands to eat so that's in a nutshell what cholera is Okay, we'll come back to these uh, causes of uh, cholera and all that. But let's have an update also, if you may, of uh, what is really happening, uh, why it is a scare, if it is, right now, especially in Lagos with the kind of crowd that we have. Great question. So, so we started getting these cases. So um, I'm, part, I'm part of an, an infection prevention control group of public health physicians and practitioners. And we started getting reports from uh, primary health centers, from our general hospitals, that we we're having increased cases and even clusters uh, of cases for people with these profuse um, diarrhea cases. So we became, we, we, everyone got on heightened alerts. As of two days ago, we had up to 60 cases and up to five deaths. The reason why cholera is very, very important, particularly for a city like Lagos, because cholera is a disease that thrives where there's poor sanitation, where there's overcrowding, where there's um, where there are poor sewage disposal um, procedures, open defecation, for example. So these are issues that we do have in Lagos. Then added to the fact that we've had some flooding in the past few days. So when the floods happen, the places where there's open defecation or poor sewage disposal um, procedures, the floods wash these things into sources of water and that's how water gets contaminated. The reason cholera is very, very important is because it can kill very, very quickly. An individual can start having diarrhea and completely lose most of their fluid and die within a few hours if they don't get medical help. So this is why we're, we're extremely, extremely concerned about what we've been seeing in the past few days. And that's quite scary. Um, but how do I know that this is cholera? It's not my village people just uh, <laughs> coming after me. What are the signs <laughs> that uh, this may be cholera? Okay, so so what we, what, the way we, we, we try to um, identify cholera is first, we have what we call a suspected case. So a suspected case will be um, an individual that has profuse diarrhea um, or even death. And when that happens to a, a large number of people or more people than we expect, we, we sort of suspect there might be an outbreak. To confirm a case of cholera, however, there's some lab tests that you have to do. So those tests 
will confirm that the individual has cholera. Some of the tests include even visualizing the bacteria under a microscope when you take a sample from the person's stool. So those are the ways that we can confirm that the individual has cholera. But till the tests confirm that the case of cholera, up to that point, the case is still identified as a suspected case of cholera. Well, while I was doing a background to what we are going to be discussing right now, one of the things that came up was that some of these people came and they were quite late, uh, to put mm -hmm. it simply. And we know our attitude, the Nigerian attitude, to going to hospitals. In fact, when you tell someone I'm in the hospital, they, they just raise their hands in the air and I'm like, oh God, he's dead. Because, and give up. <laughs> yes, that is, that is the the orientation we have about hospitals, which means there are a lot of people who may have these and thinking that the hospital is like, I should go when I'm about to die. That means we might have yeah. more casualties. So how accessible, yeah. first of all, is, is the medication for cholera when these people present with this and they get to the hospital mm -hmm. so that people will get to know that I don't have to be uh, dying before I go to the hospital? You, you raised a fantastic point. I'm glad you raised this point, honestly, because one of the reasons, one of the things that affects our health seeking behavior in this part of the world is lack of access to health care. Because we don't have universal health coverage, when someone is sick, they think if I go to the hospital, that means I'm going to spend all my money mm -hmm. and I'm going to be completely bankrupt. So they don't want to go till it's way too late. So with cholera, if you don't seek help on time, the, the prognosis gets even slimmer as the time goes on. So people need to understand, first of all, we have primary health centers. Primary health centers, um, treatment is free, particularly go to a comprehensive health center, primary health center, they are open 24 hours. Treatment is free. All you need to do is purchase your card and you can get treated. So people don't realize that you can actually walk into a primary health center and get your treatment for free. So because they think I need to pay all this money to get health care, they stay at home till they're almost at death's Wait, door. Wait, hold that thought. That hold that thought, doctor. Our general, general hospitals are actually equipped to handle um, these cases, so people can go to a primary health center and a general hospital and get the care that they need. Okay, when you said free, is it free for cholera only or for almost every other ailment that you might have? That's primary health centers. Primary health centers are free for all death. Treatment is free for all ailments. Pregnancy, delivery, everything. The only thing, I'm going to put this caveat, the only thing you need to buy your card and you need to but if you're prescribed medications, you need to buy your medications. But I'm, the treatment itself is free. I'm going Delivery back for is some free. Refunds. Primary health centers will treat you for free, correct? I'm going back for some refunds right now because, because yeah. the experience <laughs> the experience I have had and some people have had is not a very free experience. But that is matter for another day. Uh, maybe something needs to be done another about monitoring. <laughs> monitoring and a channel of reports when it gets to that should be, should be made available to the people because we need that information. But I'm glad that yeah. it is free uh, like that. So now, but you know, there is always in fact sometimes you may not have even access to a primary health uh, care or center uh, malaria i i understand has some some kits that you can you can do i'm not advocating self-help anyway but malaria has some kit that you can use to determine whether you have mm -hmm. it you you have that same thing for pregnancy for instance and all that does cholera have anything that you can use to test yourself No, you can't test yourself for cholera. Actually, it's dangerous to test yourself for cholera because of how infectious the disease is. To test, to test yourself, you're going to be testing a stool sample. Mm. To test a stool sample for cholera, there are trained individuals that actually take the sample. There are, there, there, there are specific um, procedures for taking the sample transporting the sample to the lab because if it's not done correctly the individual taking the sample can actually get infected the person doing the test in the lab can get infected so 
it's not so it's contagious for individual or personal use. it's contagious yeah, absolutely oh, it's yeah. contagious exactly like i had said initially from contaminated food water and that are soiled correct okay but how how serious maybe on a scale of one to ten is this taken in hospitals because whether we like it or not um the medical profession is short staffed they, they that sector is mm -hmm. short staffed there are not a lot of people mm -hmm. and the facilities the infrastructure are not there and we find situations mm -hmm. truly that sometimes um, patients are brought to the hospitals, no beds, no, no accommodation for them. They are at the corridors and all that. It happens whether we like it or not. So if you have a case of cholera, how important mm -hmm. is the hospitals now rating it such that you will always get attention? It's a very important issue that you raise because the healthcare infrastructure is the basis on which we treat all the diseases that we treat and we manage the outbreaks that we manage. Mm -hmm. So our healthcare infrastructure, we, 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 let's not lie to ourselves, needs a lot of work. True. We've had a lot of brain drain, a lot of my colleagues have left the country. Um, the materials that we work with are not um, sometimes not be available. We know that these things are issues, but there are things that we're doing, like for example, since we've had um, these cases, we started doing constant training for healthcare workers mm. so that people know exactly how to handle the cases of, of these suspected um, the cases of gastroenteritis that are coming in, know how to isolate them because they need to be isolated. So because we're a resource for um, country, sometimes you have to cluster your cases in one room, for example, as opposed to isolating one person per room. So what we do, we improve, we can improvise, we cluster all our suspected cases in one room and manage them there. So, so these are the real issues that need to be tackled like fundamentally. But I can tell you that myself and my colleagues, we, we were constantly um, be very creative and working with what we have because at the end of the day our patients are our number one priority mm. but i don't want a case of uh, um, dr adadevu anymore um, i know the sacrifices that doctors and health workers yes, are doing absolutely. we don't we don't want, we don't we want don't that want case that. anymore we don't. yeah so what what yeah, is the government not. now that the government has raised alarm what have what has the the government done to make sure that you, your work is seamless at, as much as it can be. Has any improvement been done just because we have some kind of pandemic? Okay, so first of all, it's not a pandemic. It's, it's a suspected outbreak of cholera. Well, well it sounds you know, scary to me. <laughs> so what does yeah. <laughs> So as, as soon as we started getting um, reports of these cases. The emergency response was kicked in. So there's, there's, there's a whole process we call an, an emergency response system. It was kicked in. We said that we started upscaling um, our surveillance, case detection, very, very important. Started training health workers on how to manage these cases. Um, started looking very, very closely at our lab processes, started doing risk communication, for example. What I'm doing now is one of the things that has been kicked off because of this suspected outbreak. So there are many things that kick off once we have these reports called an emergency response, and those processes have already been kicked off and are ongoing. Oh, okay. So um, just we just had a flash on the screen, uh, cholera vaccine. Does it mean it has some kind of prevention that we can take? Yeah, so there are layers of prevention. So now that we've brought up prevention, I'm going to use this opportunity to, to speak to prevention. One of my one of my 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 colleagues said cholera is one disease that is a respecter of persons. Mm. Cholera respects good hygiene. Mm. Because cholera only thrives where there's poor hygiene. So the ways that we can prevent cholera, 
one frequent hand washing. If you don't have access to soap and, and clean running water, you can use alcohol hand rubs. When you eat your fruits, make sure you wash your fruits with clean water. Or if you're unsure, you can peel the back of your fruits, wash your vegetables carefully, or even pre-boil them if you have to. Don't take or don't drink water from a, from questionable sources. When you use the toilet, always wash your hands. Wash your hands before you eat. Avoid open defecation. The next level of prevention is the cholera vaccine. The, we call it the oral cholera vaccine because they are mostly taken orally. We have three actually really good oral cholera vaccines that are quite efficacious and can actually uh, protect you for up to a period of two years. So those are available. So if I take a cholera vaccine now, I have Odeshi already against cholera, or <laughs> what is it? So when, so when you take a vaccine, so there's no vaccine that gives you protection 100%. So the, the vaccine will give you protection up to a point, but you have to take the personal responsibility mm -hmm. to maintain your personal hygiene. So that there are different layers of prevention and protection, and you have to make sure you have all of them layered on to give you the full protection that you need. Okay, so I'm worried about uh, the orientation. Besides, oral okay. cholera vaccine is actually not that readily available. It's, oh. it's a vaccine that is not very readily available. So you have to really rely on your personal hygiene to keep yourself protected. Okay. Uh, oh, well, um, I'm, I'm worried about the orientation of our people uh, that will help them mm -hmm. uh, live the life that will be cholera-free, <laughs> this uh, hygienic yeah. life and all that. How do you think we can carry this evangelism uh, to the people who really need, uh, need it? So it starts with you and I. So what I'm doing right now is the first step, informing the public, educating the public, on what they need to do. I have other platforms that I also use, and I educate people on how to protect themselves against um, uh, cholera. So educating the people around you, people like, like myself that are in this space that have platforms, we con constantly educate the public. I have people that work in the, in the local government areas. They are called health educators. They actually walk around the streets with megaphones telling people, speaking to people about personal hygiene, how to protect themselves. So these are um, things that we can do, both at the grassroots and within our families, our friends. We need to spread the message any way that we can. Mm. Okay, let's take uh, another final uh, word from you. Just uh, not a question now. What would you like to say to Lagosians, to Nigerians, uh, about cholera and generally uh, healthcare? Okay, so last word to Legations about cholera. First, first off, don't panic. The truth is most of the cases of cholera actually don't, have, don't come down with any symptoms. Up to 75 to 80% will not come down with symptoms. About 20% will come down with symptoms, but we have to protect even the 20%. And the way to do that is your own personal responsibility. Avoid open defecation. Make sure you wash your hands regularly. Use alcohol hand rubs if you don't have access to water. Wash your fruits, wash your vegetables with clean water. Once you notice that you're having diarrhea, make sure you seek help from a healthcare facility. Before you get to the healthcare facility, there's something we call oral rehydration salt or a rehydration solution that you can make for yourself with water, six spoons of sugar, and half a teaspoon of salt. You can mix it and drink it to rehydrate yourself even before you get to the health care facility and just educate the people around you so that we can all stay healthy together. Okay, you've heard from the doctor. She didn't say go and be drinking alcohol, it will kill cholera. She didn't say that. She <laughs> no. said wash your hands if there's no clean water. 
Uh, well, uh, Doctor, I would like to thank you so much for enlightening us on this. And we do hope that uh, people will uh, hear this and make sure they go to the right places to get help when this happens. We should not be thinking about going there when it is almost too late. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Have an awesome day. You too. We've been talking to Dr. Blossom Madua Fokwa, a public uh, health physician. We were talking about the outbreak of cholera, uh, which uh, the, the government has raised the alarm. And the bottom line is that you need uh, to take care of your personal hygiene, because if you do that, you might be very, very far away from diseases like cholera. Not just cholera, but there are other things that come with being unhygienic. So, uh, take care of your health because you can be, uh, you can live longer if you are just hygienic, not necessarily that you have access to a lot of medication. You can just be hygienic and be healthier than the person who has uh, access to medication but is not hygienic, you know. So uh, we'll take a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our second hot topic. Stay with us.